And that's pretty much it. This is just a basic rundown of how to set up for a spike of cast. It'll at least help you get through the case and give you a clue about what to expect and the kind of things to pull for. So good luck. This is considered to be an unsterile case, but I have found with doing these, if you use like the regular uh, exam gloves, the casting material is so sticky that it's kind of a huge pain to try to hold the leg with. So I actually open a pair of sterile gloves that fit me appropriately, and it just makes holding the leg a little bit easier. It's still gonna be sticky and tacky, but to me, it's just, it's a little bit easier to hold a glove with a glove that fits my hand. Our particular doctors like to use some lubing jelly at the end of the case, and they'll just rub it all over the casting material to help it be a little bit less sticky for the patient. The towels that I mentioned earlier that go around the, on the patient's waist, they leave on until the cast is completely dry. So they don't want to have any trouble with the patient being able to breathe. So when the, when the cast is totally dry, like when they go to recovery, then they'll pull those towels out and the patient will just have the cast. Once they get all of the soft roll around the patient's waist and leg, then they'll start opening up these. And I, I don't open them. I let the doctor open them because sometimes we use less, sometimes we use more. So if you open it, then it is wasted if it isn't used because these will dry out really badly. And they will open them individually. They'll dunk them in our water and make sure they're soaked really well. And then they'll do the same manner as with the soft roll and they will wrap the waist and they will wrap the leg with um, the casting. So now that we got our bed ready, we've got all of our supplies ready, it's time to put the spica cast on the patient. As a scrub tech, you will be holding each leg here at the end of the bed while the doctor puts the cast on. The first thing that they will do is they will put this four inch through both legs and all the way up to the waist of the patient. Then if they're doing just one leg, um, they will use this a three inch and I cut it really long because they can cut it shorter later. If we're doing bilateral legs, which we do on occasion, make sure you have two of these. It's also important to have towels because they will put these towels on the patient's abdomen and then put the cast on so that we don't over tighten the cast and then the patient has trouble breathing. Once they get these two on, they'll start wrapping the waist and the leg with your soft roll. It's important as a scrub tech that you are bending the patient's leg up enough so that they can sit down comfortably when they're awake, and but they can also stand. So you wanna be bending the knee, doing a bit of external rotation and making sure that foot's at 90 degrees to the leg so that they can walk and then they can sit because they will be wearing this cast for six weeks. So you have to consider that. Okay, so starting with the supplies that I've pulled, I pulled three two inch cast rolls, three three inch cast rolls. I'm not sure how large the, the child's leg is. So I got two different sizes of stockinette, two and three inch. This will go over the leg before we start wrapping it. And then I also pulled this four inch stockinette. This will actually go around the child's waist. Uh, so we need something a little bit larger and I pulled this four inch. I got scissors to cut all that with. You wanna grab a crappy pair of scissors. If you use nice ones out of a tray or something, it will permanently ruin them because when you cut casting material, the sticky part of that will stick to these and they'll be permanently like sticky forever. It's hard to get off. I got four rolls of soft roll, three inch. I got some more if we need it. You need a large bucket and some water. It doesn't have to be sterile, but I use sterile water. And you wanna make sure that it's room temperature. Uh, sometimes we put cast on, we do use warm in order to make the cast form up faster. You want it, don't wanna do that on spikers because it's time consuming to put spikers on and you don't wanna be rushed to have to put it on because it's hardening too fast. We also have this instrument. We call it the ex-mother-in-law. I don't know the actual name of it, but this is used at the end to try to 
make the, the, to, the toe box be a little bit more oval so that the pinky toe isn't being smushed in the, um, the cast itself. This is the cart that holds all of our casting material. The most important thing that you need to do is ask the patient what color they want. We are a pediatric hospital, so we have all kinds of colors because we want our patients to look cool. Once you determine what color the cast is going to be, these are small children, so I recommend pulling um, four or five of each size. Our patient wants pink today, so I'm gonna start with two inch pink, and it looks like this, and it shows on the front of it, you know, the size and the color. Pull at least four or five of these, and then I'm also going to pull three inch pinks, four or five of these. I might also pull a four inch pink, but that's probably too big for our patient, but at least we could have it in the room in case the doctor needs it if the patient is, is large. So this is what the bed looks like put together. The bar down here at the bottom just slides in there and you can tighten it. It's totally adjustable for you know the size of the child that you have. This piece slides in and this is what the child's butt's actually going to be laying on and you want their crotch to basically be right here and a leg will go on either side of this piece. These holes are for the arm boards. So depending on the size of your child, you can just move them in whatever hole is appropriate for them. Now let's go gather some supplies and get ready for our patient. This part is the main body of the bed, but the patient will be laying on this bar here. This is our spica table. There's five pieces to it. And it just goes right on top of our, our um, OR bed. It's radio lucent, so we will be able to take x-rays during the case to make sure that we have a good reduction of the femur. So today we are going to be putting on a spica cast. A spica cast is a cast that we put on small children. Our uh, patient today is just under two years old. She has broken her femur and we typically don't open reduce those, we uh, put a cast on them. But it's a special type of cast that we use on very small children to reduce their femur fractures and she will be in this cast for about six weeks. I'm gonna run through the spica table that we use, different supplies that we use for this cast uh, and just give you a, a basic knowledge of things to pull and things to think about when you're setting up and assisting the doctor putting on a spica cast. 